Hopefully all you can't hear the construction that's going on in the background, but I decided to do this video finally for the channel. It's been so long. I appreciate all of you that have stayed subscribed, all of those of you that continue to share the content and stay with me on my channel. And I know you all can find me on the Wing and the Podcast every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with me, Jay, Andre, Sandstorm, Shadow, and also Vicky. So finally get a chance to make this video. And I'm going to do this in Andre style, where it's off my phone. I'm not doing nothing fancy. I'm not using my microphone. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just going to speak my piece on the content that I want to speak today. And so today is going to be in regards to the VR market and kind of where it stands and where it sits in my eyes. Not necessarily what the facts are or what Twitter says. is what I view the VR realm being as of right now. So for those of you that are not in the VR space and you think about you want to get into it, and once when you start doing the research, you start seeing there are a multitude of headsets as well as some up and coming headsets that may be showing up pretty soon. So, of course, we always have our PC headsets that we deal with where you talk about the index. You still got some that can possibly get the rift if you want to from Oculus. Uh, but then, you know, you have them in different ranges where you have to have your, your camera set up. So it's got great tracking. You got to have space. And then, of course, the lovely wires making you like the Predator at the end of the day. But then you can kind of go to the most accessible side of things where you talk about the Quest 2. Uh, you have the HP, uh, I think it's like Reverb that is called. Uh, and then you also have Pico. Uh, those are available. Uh, some of them, well, I say Pico is not available stateside, but you can still order it from overseas if you're willing to shell out that kind of cash. And then also we have the upcoming, which will be the PSVR 2. Now, the main headsets that I will be speaking about today will be the Quest 2, the Pico 4, and the PSVR 2. Now, when we talk about entry points and we talk about uh, accessibility, we talk about the games, we talk about the form factor, as well as, you know, what you're actually getting for the dollar that you're spending. Everything that I've seen, everything that I've experienced myself, and the things that we know about thus far, Quest 2 is still king. Quest 2 is still available in the sense of your, your games being available. Uh, they've taken away the, the necessity to connect to Facebook so you can make yourself a meta account and never have to connect your Facebook at all. Um, they do have exclusive games in the form of Medal of Honor as well as, uh, what was it? Yes, yeah, Saints and Sin Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Um, what else is there? There's a bunch of other things. And I think Beat Saber is now an exclusive as well. Um, of course, I'm pretty sure meta is going to disperse that out to get more money opposed to just keeping it close to home. But nonetheless, as of right now, it is uh, an exclusive, if you will. So when you look at that, Pico 4 in itself tends to be the closest competitor. But the problem with Pico 4 is, one, uh, they still have to get into the realm of getting some games up and running. It's not a scary store, but at the same time, it still needs more time to develop, even though this is the fourth iteration. Um, and then Pico 4, if I'm not mistaken, is owned by TikTok. Uh, so take that however you will. If you still buy into the whole, you know, oh, China is taking this, China's taking that. If you feel like your resources and your information hasn't been taken or stolen a store somewhere, then you're just oblivious. But either way, uh, Pico 4 seems like it's a great looking headset. Uh, it definitely provides some form of competition. The only thing I didn't care for, what I looked at was there's no headset. Also, the idea of no customization being there quite yet in the sense of the headset and a lot of things that they have promised seem to be coming in later updates or is just not ready as of right now. Now, when you look at the price point, they're both very similar in price points. They're very similar as into what you're talking about, storage size and what you may actually need. Um, I have two Quest head, Quest 2 headsets myself. I have uh, the 64 gig, which was one of the originals. And then I have the new revised uh, Meta headset that is 256 gigs that I bought before the prices went up by $100. Uh, so now we have the outlier or the new competitor that's supposed to be joining the ring starting next year at the top of the year, which is the PSVR 2. Now, I've always expressed that I've never understood where it was that Sony was going to go to next within this gaming generation because we all understand that Nintendo is always going to be exper experimenting, always be family friendly, wanting to be on the couch co-op type ordeal, and this provides you a variety of games. Uh, Xbox is always going to be your online presence. They're also looking at the cloud gaming space, the shooters, and they're, you know, 
diversifying what it what it is as far as the catalog with buying these brand new studios, trying to bring brand new games in. But Sony didn't seem to have anything going for them in the future, which VR could be that. But even on, on that note in itself, Microsoft may have an answer for for PlayStation in, in a sense by partnering up with Quest by providing Xbox game cloud, well, cloud gaming on the Quest 2 coming pretty soon. It's in beta form right now, but of course it, it won't take anything at all. And for anybody that's actually experienced the Quest 2, you know that they do offer big screen. And then also there are some apps that will have their own environment to kind of give you screen. So if it's, if Xbox is smart, yes, they would allow it to be utilized within big screen, which is a free app, but I would try to create my own environments to go into cloud and then, you know, launch a game and then have like this amazing setup, however you want to have it. Uh, when we look at apps like virtual desktop, virtual desktop has so many different environments you can be in from an apartment with a little small TV and you can see out on the side, out your window from traffic being outside. You can go into a, a coffee shop. You can be in a space station. You can be anywhere, anywhere you want to be. And that environment will be at your hands for you to play a game, search the web, do whatever it is that you want to do, right? So we we look at that availability for Quest 2 with Microsoft. So when you look at Sony, you're running into the issue of double purchasing before you even step foot into the game or even being able to play said game, right? So if you go and you buy the PSVR 2, which I'm pretty sure that thing's going to be at least at $500, if not $600, uh, but then also, too, you have to factor in the console in itself. And as we all know, in other regions, the price themselves have increased. Depending on where you are, the price differs. But at the same time, they've kind of found a clever way of doing it here in the United States by packaging it with games, whether it be Horizon Forbidden West or now it seems to be uh, God of War Ragnarok. That's coming up next. So now you're factoring in a $500 plus dollar system along with a possible $500 plus dollar headset and you're trickling into the thousand dollar realm and so it starts begging the question why not just go with pc and the, the pc headset to where you know you're going to get a very substantial benefit whether you talk about the games that are accessible to you because we see playstation games are going there xbox games are already there and then there's pc games in themselves there from all the third parties and then you factor in the headset and everything else because it's still going to be wired uh, it's not like the PSVR 2 is going to be wireless. It's one cable, which is a, which is nice, but it's still wired nonetheless. So while, yes, we have the haptic feedback that's in the controllers within the headset, as well as the controllers, you have eye tracking, you have, you know, a nice little cushion on your face, which I really like the whole IPD sensors, the 20, 2160 by 2160 in each eye. Um, I'm pretty sure these don't have pancake lenses, but if they do, then that's amazing too. So... I say all that to say this, PlayStation has an uphill battle to climb because even if you're talking about third party games coming in, that's not going to be enough. If you're talking about graphics, that's not going to be enough. So they're going to have to carry this in the same vein that Nintendo has to carry their consoles. Third parties don't show up for Nintendo until Nintendo's already successful. With Sony, they get third parties out the gate, much in the same vein as Microsoft when it comes down to consoles. But within this VR space, because it's so expensive and it's so hard to develop for, and you kind of have to have these short experiences, even though we're kind of getting longer games in the realm of Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, and now you got Retribution coming up pretty soon. Um, you even have like the longer games like Resident Evil 4 that you can really get into these campaigns and really start playing these games. But most of us that play, if you ask any Quest 2 owner, Nine times out of 10, we're playing like little quick, simple games in the sense of Cookout. Um, what is it? Um, I Expect You to Die 1 and 2. Uh, Moss, which does have, you know, a couple of hours on it, but it's nothing crazy. Uh, we're talking about Beat Saber. Talking about Synth Riders. Um, just a whole bunch of games I can just name off the top of my head that you can really just dive into, play real quick, put it down and call it a day. It's not going to warrant you to pay this astronomical amount of money for two different pieces of hardware just to play it. And let's say, for example, if you want to get into VR and you want to go the PlayStation route, are you benefiting for having that setup because you don't even play PlayStation games, you don't even play console games, you just want to get into VR, so now you have to have this big chunk of a system <laughs> that comes along with it. And then with rumors on top of that, that there may be a refresher coming up pretty soon for both Xbox and Sony, so now you're looking at a possible PS5 Pro or a Slim, and then you got the PS5 in itself. 
Question begs, does that main console price come down for you to make this a more affordable purchase when it comes down to the headset? That that begs to be seen. Uh, good thing is the controllers are coming with this headset opposed to you having to pretty much piecemeal the last headset. You got the PS VR last time. You had to get the move controllers. If you wanted to get the camera, you got the camera, but mainly they wanted you to function with that headset with the PS4 controller. So it's begged to be seen as into if anybody can pose any type of competition for Meta. Uh, Pico's trying, but for me, for Pico, you gotta get your game swag up. You gotta get available in all regions. Uh, you just gotta provide something more than what you're providing. The headset looks nice. It seems like it's very comfortable, but if the games are not there and the availability is not there, then we're really wasting time at, at, at this point. And when we start talking about you know, the PSVR 2, that's going to be a hard pill to swallow just from a price standpoint. When you talk about price standpoint and availability, because I'm pretty sure they're not going to ship out a whole lot of headsets. Not for real. I think it was, what, $3 million they were talking about shipping out. And then you still got to find the PlayStation in itself. And so you're pretty much double dipping. And if you don't play console games, then what do you really, you know, need the system in itself for? The same thing kind of goes for any PC VR headset. Do you have the money, the space, and the means to make these purchases? So at the end of the day, when we talk about what is accessible, what is affordable, and what is convenient, it's going to still be the Quest 2. I can literally walk right now, go get my headset and my controllers, put them on, my batteries and everything are already charged. I'm good to go. I don't have to do anything more than that other than draw draw my guardian so that way I don't run and break nothing. But other than that, it's, it's just pretty seamless. And it's going to take someone willing to put in the effort and the amount of, I guess you could say, uh, creativity to compete with Quest 2 at this point. Uh, now that they've moved away from the one thing that shied people away from getting the headset, that's a hard pill to swallow. Not to mention, even if you want to do PC VR gaming, you can still do it with the Quest 2 by either via AirLink, using the actual cable in itself, or now they're selling this D-Link, which I feel like is overpriced at $100, but it pretty much has a dedicated signal between your PC and your headset for you to you know, avoid lag or anything else with Wi-Fi. They're thinking of everything. When you talk about customization with the headset in itself, you can customize the Quest 2. You cannot customize the Pico. You can't customize the PS VR 2. If I wanted to get a new headset because the one that was given is very awful, like that that strap is very awful. But if I want to do a Franklin Quest, one of mine has the Franklin Quest. If I want the, uh, the original Oculus charging headset, which I do, I can have it. If I want to get Logitech's new headset that comes with the headphones, I can go get that for a hundred dollars. Like it's very accessible and customizable to where I can make it look like I want it to, make it as comfortable as I want it. And then not to mention it has a phone app for me to download games and have them ready to go before I even get home. That is the biggest perk that I had with my Xbox when I did have it. But then knowing that that's on the Quest 2 as well, it's amazing. Plus they have an amazing refund policy. I've dealt with Sony in the past with refunds with games just on the console. I can only imagine what VR is going to look like behind that. Same thing with Pico. I don't know what that looks like. Who are you talking to? Are you talking to TikTok? Are you talking to some somebody else? Like Who are you speaking to? Because they're not here in the US, so it's not like you're talking to anybody here on the soil. I don't know. This is going to be hard. I always love to see competition. I always want to see VR ad advance. I'm not too big of a fan of trying to have these big bulky headsets and as long as the technology can give me better, I guess you could say frame rates because of motion sickness as well as field of view uh, to where you can get a bigger, wider peripheral vision for you to actually play said game, then that's what I'm looking for. The games, they're there. Um, they're not meant to be played forever. They're not meant to be set, you know, for you to sit down in for hours on top of hours on top of hours. These are supposed to be short sticks for you to move along with. I'll get on and I'll play uh, one game of NFL Pro Era. I'll go in there, get a couple of touchdowns, win the game for the season, take my headset off. If I want to do Beat Saber, cool. If I want to do Fit XR for me to work out, cool. If I want to do Light Boxer for me to box a little bit, cool. If I want to cook something, I play Cookout, cool. <laughs> it is, it's all there. If I want to play with my kids, 
I now have the ability to have two headsets and buy one game. So I have the ability to have a separate account that is shared on both headsets for me to say, you know what, son, let's play cookout together. All right, it's a four player game. You got a headset, I got a headset. You can be across from me or we can be in separate rooms and let's play this game together. We just, I just bought a game called uh, Dojo Loco. It's supposed to be like a Mario Party type game within VR. We played that, had a blast. The favorite game my son had was uh, we had one spoon in one hand and we had a boxing glove in another hand. Transfer a huge egg from one end to another, but the thing is with the boxing glove, you can punch the other opponent's egg and make it crack. So it's all about who gets the most eggs, but you can kind of, you know, alter that depending on how things go. But Quest is at the top right now, regardless if you're looking at the numbers, the figures and the stocks that's going on with them and the things they have to sell off and the people they're letting go, they ain't got nothing to do with me. As long as the platform is being supported and there's now the Quest Pro for Enterprise, so that's not for gamers, but there's word that Quest 3 is right around the corner. If you want to wait to hear more about that, then so be it. But it wasn't announced at the, the Meta Connect that just happened uh, a couple of days ago. So I wouldn't really be looking for it like that. And even if it if you were, I couldn't imagine it being any cheaper than what they raised the price for these now headsets for Quest 2. So, I mean, just let me know what y'all think. If you want to see more content on VR, which you'll probably get from me because that's currently where my interests are right now. I might talk a little bit about Splatoon 3 and then everything else you'll see me talking about on the podcast with Jay or if I want to join Sandstorm or Shadow or Andre on, on one of their channels or even Vicky on one, on one of her channels. So it's definitely something that I want to continue to dive into, continue to bring interest to because I don't see it spoken a lot about on the game space unless you run into, you know, the VR heads, the ones that do VR chat randomly, the ones that do rec room, uh, the ones that really are invested already. So definitely let me know if you want more. If you want more, I'll give more. And I'll just do it in this regular style. I don't have to have nothing fancy. I'll just do it old fashioned way on my phone. So thank you all for being patient with me. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, and then come connect with me on Twitter as well. Catch y'all later. Peace.